Good day everyone, Dr. Polaris here, and welcome to this 500 subscriber episode. Living placental mammals can be divided up into four major lineages, Xenarthra, Afrotheria, Euarchontiglias, and Laurasiotheria. In today's video, we will be examining the history and present day distribution of just one of these, Afrotheria. As the name suggests, these animals originated in Africa probably during the late Cretaceous period and have an extensive fossil history on that continent. Living Afrotheres are a diverse bunch, containing some groups that need no introduction such as elephants and manatees, but also some much more poorly known animals such as Tenrex and the Golden Mole. In all, Afrotheria can be split into two broad clades, the insectivorous Afroinsectophilia and the herbivorous Payungulata. The former, meaning the African insect lovers, consists of aardvarks, elephant shrews, tenrex, otter shrews, and the golden moles. The latter, the so-called African ungulates, are made up of hyraxes, proboscideans, and the dugongs and manatees. On the surface, this may seem like a ragtag mishmash of animals. Indeed, if you were ever tasked with classifying Afrotheres solely on their appearance and morphology, you would never end up placing them all together as a natural grouping. This was the opinion held during the 19th and most of the 20th centuries. Historically, the Payungulata had been linked to the true ungulates, particularly the perissodactyls like horses and rhinos. The golden mole, tenrex and elephant shrews were placed within the traditional, and incorrect order, Insectivora, and the aardvarks were placed with the pangolins and the xenarthrans within the invalid taxon Edentata. This confusion can be blamed on the fact that Afrotheres demonstrate many examples of convergent evolution with other groups of mammals. Because Africa was isolated by water, Laurasian groups of mammals such as insectivores, rodents, rabbits, carnivorans, and large herbivores could not reach Africa for much of the early to mid-Cenozoic. Instead, the niches occupied by those groups on the northern continents were filled by various groups of Afrotheres. The small insectivorous Afrotheres such as elephant shrews, golden moles, and tenrex filled the niches of insectivores. The hyraxes filled the roles of rodents and rabbits. The aardvarks filled the roles of various medium-sized anteating mammals, such as anteaters, armadillos and pangolins, found on other continents, and proboscideans, elephants and their relatives, filled the role of large herbivores such as hippos and rhinos. The Cyrenians quickly became aquatic and started spreading to other parts of the world, evolving convergently with other groups of marine mammals. The common ancestry of these animals was not recognised until the late 1990s. Since then, increasing molecular and anatomical data have been applied to the classification of all animals. Both types of data support the idea that Afrotherian mammals are descended from a single common ancestor to the exclusion of all other mammals. On the anatomical side, features shared by most, if not all, Afrotheres include high vertebral counts, aspects of the placental membrane formation, the shape of the ankle bones, and the relatively late eruption of the permanent dentition. Studies of genomic data, including millions of allied nucleotides sampled for a growing number of placental mammals, also support Afrotheria as a consistent group. I suppose the best place to start would be with an overview of Afrotheres alive today, starting with Afroinsectophilia. Phylogenetic studies have found that the aardvarks of the order Tubilidentata are the most basal of these. Although the name aardvark may be familiar to some, especially if you grew up in the 1990s and watched Arthur after school like I did, it may come as a surprise that real aardvarks look nothing like their bespectacled cartoon counterpart. Meaning earth pig in Afrikaans, the aardvark is a medium-sized, burrowing, nocturnal mammal native to Africa. It is the only living species of the order Tubilidentata, although other prehistoric species and genera are known. Unlike other insectivores, it has a long pig-like snout, which is used to sniff out food. It roams over most of the southern two-thirds of the African continent, avoiding areas that are mainly rocky. A nocturnal feeder, 
it subsists on ants and termites, which it will dig out of their hills using its sharp claws and powerful legs. It also digs to create burrows in which to live and rear its young. The first aardvark fossil discovered was originally named Oryctoropus gaudrii, and was found in Miocene deposits on the Greek island of Samos. Since then, representatives of the order Tubilidentata have been located from the Oligocene in what is now Europe, and it is believed that the order probably originated around 65 million years ago in the Paleocene. As we will see later on, these Afrotheas, like many of their cousins, once had a much wider range than they do today. Indeed, fossil relatives of aardvarks once inhabited a large part of Eurasia until the Pliocene, when they all became extinct. In addition, a mysterious group of African mammals, the Ptolemyodons, seem to be close relatives as well. Elephant shrews, also called jumping shrews or sengis, are small insectivorous mammals native to Africa, belonging to the family Macroscalididae, in the order Macroscalidea. Their traditional common English name, elephant shrew, comes from a perceived resemblance between their long noses and the trunk of an elephant, and their superficial similarity with the true shrews in the family Sauricidae. However, phylogenetic analysis revealed that elephant shrews are not classified with true shrews at all, but are in fact more closely related to elephants after all. They are widely distributed across the southern part of Africa, and although not particularly common animals, can be found in almost any type of habitat, from the Namib desert to boulder-strewn outcrops in South Africa to thick forest. Elephant shrews are small quadrupedal insectivorous mammals resembling rodents or opossums, with scaly tails, long snouts, and legs that are quite elongated for their size which are used to move from one place to another in a bounding motion similar to rabbits. They vary in size from about 10 to 30 centimetres long, and from 50 to 500 grams in weight. They have large canine teeth, and also high crowned cheek teeth similar to those of ungulates. Although mostly diurnal and very active, they are difficult to trap and very rarely seen. Elephant shrews are wary, well camouflaged, and adept at dashing away from threats. Several species make a series of cleared pathways through the undergrowth and spend their day patrolling them for insect life. If the animal is disturbed, the pathway provides an obstacle-free escape route. Elephant shrews mainly eat insects, spiders, centipedes, millipedes and earthworms. The animal uses its nose to find prey and then its tongue to flick small food into its mouth, much like an anteater. A number of fossil species are known, all from Africa. A considerable diversification of macroscalidids occurred in the Paleogene era. Some, such as Myohyrax, were so similar to Hyraxes that they were initially included with that group, while others, such as Mylomagale, were relatively rodent-like. It appears that these animals were ancestrally more herbivorous than their modern relatives, and became increasingly insectivorous over time. These unusual forms all died out by the Pleistocene. Golden moles are a small insectivorous group of burrowing mammals endemic to southern Africa. They comprise the family Chrysoloricidae, and as such they are taxonomically distinct from true moles of the family Talpidae and other mole-like animals, all of which, to various degrees, they resemble as a result of evolutionary convergence. Like most burrowing mammals with similar habits, Golden moles have short legs with powerful digging claws, very dense fur that repels dirt and moisture, and toughened skin, particularly on the head. Their eyes are non-functional and covered with furred skin. The external ears are just tiny, simple openings. In particular, golden moles bear a remarkable resemblance to the marsupial moles of Australia, which they resemble so suggestively that at one time, the marsupial placental divide notwithstanding, some argued that they must be related. The animals range in size from about 8 to 20 centimetres long. They have muscular shoulders and forelimbs, which are radically adapted for digging. All the toes on the forefeet have been reduced, except for a large, pick-like third claw on the third toe. The fifth digit is absent, and the first and fourth digits are vestigial. The adaptations of the hind feet are less dramatic, they retain all five toes 
and are webbed as an adaptation to efficient backward shoveling of soil loosened by the front claws. Most species live almost exclusively underground in their respectively preferred environments, beneath either grasslands, forests, swamps, deserts or mountainous terrain. However, Chrysopelax species tend to forage above ground in leaf litter in forests or in meadows. Eremitalpa species such as Grant's Golden Mole live in the sandy Namib Desert, where they cannot form tunnels because the sand collapses. Instead, during the day, when they must seek shelter, they literally swim through the loose sand, using their broad claws to paddle and dive down some 50 centimetres to where it is bearably cool. There they enter a state of torpor, thus conserving energy. At night they emerge to forage on the surface rather than wasting energy shifting sand. Their main prey are termites that live under isolated grass clumps, and they must travel for six kilometers a night in search of food. They seek out promising clumps by listening for wind-rustled grass root stresses and termite head-banging alarm signals, neither of which can be heard easily above ground, so they stop periodically and dig their heads under the sand to listen. They are a criminally underrated group of mammals, like all of the Afro-insectophilians, as they are both unique and pretty damn adorable. Tenrecomorpha forms the sister group to the golden moles. This group includes otter shrews and tenrecs, which are indigenous to equatorial Africa and Madagascar respectively. The otter shrews of the family Potamogalidae are a family of semi-aquatic riverine mammals indigenous to sub-Saharan Africa. All otter shrews are carnivorous, preying on any aquatic animal they can find with their sensitive whiskers. As their name suggests, they bear a strong but superficial resemblance to true otters, to which they are not closely related, nor are they closely related to the shrews. They move through the water by undulating their tail in a side-to-side -side motion similar to the motions made by a crocodile. They are rather poorly known animals, as they live in densely forested areas of western and central Africa that are difficult to access. There are only three living species, and the family split from Tenrex between 47 and 53 million years ago. Speaking of Tenrex, these insectivorous mammals are only native to Madagascar today, but originated in Africa. Tenrex are widely diverse. As a result of convergent evolution, some resemble hedgehogs, shrews, opossums or mice. They occupy aquatic, arboreal, terrestrial and fossorial environments. All Tenrex are believed to descend from a common ancestor that lived 29 to 37 million years ago, after rafting over from Africa. The smallest species are the size of shrews, with a body length of around 4.5 centimetres and weighing just about 5 grams, while the largest, the common or tailless Tenrec, is 25 to 39 centimetres in length and can weigh over a kilogram. Unusually among placentals, the anus and urogenital tracts of Tenrex share a common opening, or cloaca, a feature more commonly seen in birds, reptiles and amphibians. The lack of an external scrotum can also be seen in most other aphrotheres as well. Moving on to the other great group of aphrotheres, the peungulates, we find the hyraxes at the base of this lineage. These small herbivorous mammals may strongly resemble rodents such as guinea pigs, but they are not closely related to them at all. In truth, their closest living relatives are elephants and manatees. Typically, they measure between 30 and 70 centimetres long, and weigh between 2 and 5 kilograms. Hyraxes retain or have redeveloped a number of primitive mammalian characteristics. In particular, they have poorly developed internal temperature regulation, for which they compensate by behavioural thermoregulation, such as huddling together and basking in the sun. Unlike most other browsing and grazing animals, they do not use the incisors at the front of the jaw for slicing off leaves and grass. Rather, they use the molar teeth at the sides of the jaw. The two upper incisors are large and tusk-like and grow continually throughout life, much like those of elephants. Hyrax inhabit rocky terrain across sub-Saharan Africa and the Middle East. Their feet have rubbery pads with numerous sweat glands, which may help the animal maintain its grip when moving quickly up steep rocky surfaces. 
Hyraxes have stumpy toes with hoof-like nails. There are four toes on each front foot and three on each back foot. They also have efficient kidneys, retaining water so that they can survive better in arid environments. Hyraxes share several unusual characteristics with the mammalian orders Proboscidea, elephants and their extinct relatives, and Sirenia, the manatees and dugongs. Male hyrax lack a scrotum and their testicles remain tucked up in their abdominal cavity next to the kidneys, the same as in elephants, manatees and dugongs. Female hyrax have a pair of teats near their armpits, or axilla, as well as four teats in the groin. Elephants have a pair of teats near their axillae, and dugongs and manatees have a pair of teats, one located close to the front of the flippers. The tusks of hyraxes develop from the incisor teeth, as do the tusks of elephants. Hyraxes, like elephants, have flattened nails on the tips of their digits, rather than curved, elongated claws which are usually seen on mammals. All modern hyraxes are members of the family Procavidae, the only living family within Hyracoidea, and are found only in Africa and the Middle East. In the past, however, hyraxes were more diverse and widespread. The order first appears in the fossil record at a site in the Middle East in the form of Diamitherium 37 million years ago. For many millions of years, Hyraxes, Proboscideans, and other Afrotherian mammals were primarily terrestrial herbivores in Africa, just as odd-toed ungulates were in North America. Through the middle to late Eocene, many different species existed, the largest of them weighing the same as a small horse, and the smallest the size of a mouse. During the Miocene, however, competition from the newly evolved bovids, which were very efficient grazers and browsers, displaced the hyrax into marginal niches. Nevertheless, the order remained widespread and diverse as late as the end of the Pliocene about 2 million years ago, with representatives throughout most of Africa, Europe and Asia. The close cousins of the hyraxes, the Proboscideans, need no introduction. Three forms exist today, the African bush elephant, the African forest elephant and the Asian elephant. In addition to their enormous size, Later proboscideans are distinguished by tusks and long muscular trunks. These features were less developed or absent in the smaller, earlier proboscideans. Beginning in the mid-Miocene, most members of this order were very large animals. The largest land mammal today is the African elephant, weighing up to 10.4 tons, with a shoulder height of up to 4 meters. The largest land mammal of all time may also have been a proboscidean. Paleoloxodon nomadicus, which may have weighed up to 22 tons with a shoulder height of up to 5.2 meters. The earliest known proboscidean is Erytherium, followed by Phosphatotherium, a small animal about the size of a fox. These both date from the late Paleocene deposits of Morocco. Proboscideans evolved in Africa, where they increased in size and diversity during the Eocene and early Oligocene. Several primitive families from these epochs have been described, including the Numidotheridae, Morotheridae, and Barotheridae, all found exclusively in Africa. When Africa became connected to Europe and Asia after the shrinking of the Tethys Sea, Proboscideans began to migrate into Eurasia, and some families eventually reached North America. Proboscideans found in Eurasia, in addition to Africa, include the Dinotheridae, which thrived during the Miocene and into the early Quaternary, Stegolophodon, a genus of the disputed family Stegodontidae, a diverse family of Gomphotheridae such as Platybelodon, and the Mammutidae or Mastodons. Most families of Proboscideans are now extinct, including all of them that lived in the Americas, Europe and Northern Asia. Many of these extinctions occurred during or shortly after the last glacial period, Recently extinct species include the last examples of Gomphotheres in the Americas, the American Mastodon of the family Mammutidae in North America, the last of the mammoths throughout the Northern Hemisphere, and several species of dwarf elephants found on various islands scattered around the world. The sister group of the Proboscideans are the Sirenians, represented by the dugongs and manatees, commonly referred to as sea cows, 
They are an order of fully aquatic herbivorous mammals that inhabit swamps, rivers, estuaries, marine wetlands, and coastal marine waters. Sirenians grow to between 2.5 and 4 meters in length, and up to 1,500 kilos in weight. The now extinct Stella's sea cow was the largest Sirenian to have ever lived, and could reach lengths of 8 meters and weights of 8 to 10 tons. Sirenians have large, torpedo-shaped bodies to reduce drag through the water. They have heavy bones that act as ballast to counter their buoyancy of their blubber. This layer of blubber is consequently thin and are sensitive to temperature fluctuations, which cause migrations when water temperatures dip too low. Sirenians are slow moving, typically coasting at 8 km an hour, or 5 miles an hour, but they can reach 24 km an hour in short bursts. They use their strong lips to pull out seagrass, consuming 10 to 15% of their body weight per day. The meat, oil, bones and skin are valuable items sold in markets around the world. Mortality is often caused by direct hunting by humans and other human-induced causes, such as habitat destruction, entanglement in fishing gear and watercraft collisions. Stella's sea cow went extinct due to overhunting in 1768, as these gentle animals had no fear of human hunters. Today, there are three species of manatees that inhabit West Africa, the Caribbean and the Amazon River. One species of dugong is found across Southeast Asia and the Indian Ocean. Sirenians first appeared in the fossil record in the early Eocene and significantly diversified throughout the period. Sirenians, unlike other marine animals such as cetaceans, also started off in the New World. One of the earliest aquatic Sirenians discovered is Prorostomus, which dates back to 40 million years ago, and the first known Sirenian, the quadruped Pezosiren, lived 50 million years ago. An ancient Sirenian fossil of a petrosal bone was found in Tunisia, dating back to approximately the same time as Prorostomus. This is the oldest Sirenian fossil to be found in Africa, and supports molecular data suggesting that Sirenians must have originated there. Prorostomidae and Proterosirenidae, the earliest Sirenian families, consisted of pig-like semi-aquatic animals who died out at the end of the Eocene. When the Dugongidae appeared at this time, Sirenians had evolved the characteristics of the modern groups, including an aquatic streamlined body with flipper-like front legs with no hind limbs, and a powerful tail with horizontal caudal fins which use an up and down motion to move through the water. In addition to living forms, there are also several totally extinct groups of Afrotheas. Two genera from the Paleocene of North Africa, Osipea and Obdunodus, are the most primitive Afrotheas found so far. Both were herbivorous animals up to 7 kilograms in weight, and share many features of both Afroinsectophilia and Paeungulata. They may have been arboreal, and their teeth show adaptations for crushing and shearing tough vegetation. The above-mentioned Ptolemyodons, ancient and mysterious relatives of aardvarks, were present in East Africa and Egypt during the Miocene. They were badger-sized animals with strange, heavily worn molars adapted for crushing. As they are only known from teeth and jaw fossils, we have no idea as to what their post-cranial skeletons look like, hence the debate over their diet and lifestyle. Embrithopoda, meaning heavy-footed, was an order of extinct mammals known from Asia, Africa and Eastern Europe. Most of the embrithopod genera are known exclusively from teeth and jaws, dated from the late Paleocene to the late Eocene, but the order is best known from its terminal member, the huge Arsinotherium. They were members of Paeungulata, being particularly closely related to elephants and Sirenians. While embrithopods bore a superficial resemblance to rhinoceroses, their horns had bony cores covered in keratinized skin and were not made of hair. Not all embrithopods possessed horns either. Interestingly, this group was once native to Europe and the Middle East, despite evolving in Africa. Embrithopods were selective browsers, much like modern black rhinos, and clearly thrived during the warm tropical conditions of the Eocene, but fared poorly at the turn of the Oligocene. The largest and most famous genus, Arsinotherium, 
was also the last and died out roughly 28 million years ago. Another group of large herbivorous mammals, the Desmostylians, were once thought to be peungulates as well. However, their classification is poorly understood and they may in actuality be part of Perissodactyla. And with that, we come to the end of this special video. Thanks for watching everyone. I really appreciate your help in reaching 500 subscribers and I hope you stick around for future episodes. See you again soon. Cheerio.